Hi everyone, it's Laura here and today I am bringing you a bit of a different video than what you're used to here on my channel. I recently got into bullet journaling because I was looking for a way to organize my life basically and keep track of things that were important to me. So I basically watched a ton of videos here on YouTube and I caved in and I started my own bullet journal. The notebook that I chose is a Le Monde journal. I picked this particular one because the paper is quite thick and I wanted to be able to use my markers and my pens without fear of ghosting. I'm also going to use my Faber-Castell fine liners and for the first part of the journal I decided to use stamps. These ones here are by Create a Smile Stamps and I will have a list of all the supplies that I used in the description box down below. But basically the thing is I cannot do calligraphy, I cannot do brush lettering, so I thought that using these stamps would be a way to go around that and have my notebook look pretty. I do want to learn brush lettering and I'm also planning on doing some doodling on this journal but for the very beginning I thought it would be also a little bit faster to use my stamps. I'm also going to use these duo tip brush markers. These are similar to Tombow markers but the brand is called Marvi Uchida or Uchida, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And these are the pastel shades. I went ahead and set up the first three pages of my bullet journal and I am leaving those for my index and then here I'm going to start setting up the future log. I'm starting from the title and I'm going to use these alphabet stamps to basically build my words. If you're new to my channel and haven't watched any of my card making videos and are not familiar with card making and stamping, what you will need together with the stamps is an acrylic block to mount them on. I'm picking a very small one because it's easier to handle and to do the stamping. And then you're obviously going to need an ink pad. I chose VersaFine Onyx Black Ink because it's nice and juicy and it's, um, you know, you get a very crisp impression. I didn't with the first letter, but that's because I forgot to put uh, basically some, like another notebook or something behind the pages of my notebook to make it even. But you can see that the rest of the stamping went pretty, you know, nicely and pretty smoothly. And wherever I have missing areas, I can go in with my Faber-Castell black felt tip pen. This is in the size S and filling those gaps and have my letters look nice and neat. I'm going to decorate the titles a little bit with my brush markers, adding a very simple horizontal line and a little bit of shading to the left side of the letters. This is my very first bullet journal and I want to keep it functional. Uh, so I started kind of slow. I will not have a ton of pages on my yearly spreads and I will see how it goes. I might add a few extra at the end, like if I decide to start keeping track of the books I read, of the movies I watch. But right now it's mostly about planning my time, so this is what I will be focusing on. I started basically laying down my yearly calendar and I mean, it's July, right? So it doesn't really make a lot of sense to have my future log starting in January. But this is what I did because I can always write down birthdays and I have them there so I can use them when I migrate to my next journal for the following year. And also, I guess, this counted a little bit as practice and it was for sure relaxing to do this. So for each month, I have a small box with all the days in the month. And then I have a larger box where I am going to write down important events or maybe tasks, but I'm not sure because it will get very cramped pretty quickly. At the top, I left a line that I'm filling in with a black marker and there I'm going to write the month's names with my white jelly roll pen. This is a Sakura jelly roll pen and again, this will be listed in the description box down below together with all the other supplies that I used. 
the marker I got is from WH Smith here in the UK, but with the white gel pen it reacted in a little bit of a weird way, so the letters, or rather whatever I write on top with the white gel pen, doesn't look stark white, but gets kind of a purplish hue. So in the future I'm going to switch to my Faber-Castell brush tip marker and hopefully that will work better. I'm just fixing the edges of the letters that overlap with the banners at the top, um, sort of highlighting them with the white gel pen so that they stand out nicely. And as you saw a minute ago, I also used my brush markers to color the header of the monthly calendars and I'm going in rainbow order because rainbows are pretty. Here I just wanted to show you that I made a mistake in the days in November. So in order to cover that up, I used these perforated dotted sheets. These are the same off-white color as my notebook. So basically I just trimmed down a rectangle the size of my monthly spread, wrote down the right numbers this time, and then I glued it to my pages. I am filling in my future log with tasks for July that I had to blur out because some of that are design team assignments that I have for my card making activity, so I didn't want to show them. And the way I think I'm going to do it for the future is I'm not going to track every single event cause, or every single task because it's going to get pretty cramped. I think what I will do every month is I will just basically circle or color in the date with the corresponding marker where I have a task and I will only write the most important things here in the yearly spread. Whereas for the more uh, detailed planning, I'm going to use my monthly spreads and my weekly spreads. Next up, I started working on the page for my key. I could have done this at the beginning of the journal, but I decided to just do it here. It's not really important because I have an index, so I always know where I can find my pages. Plus, the key is pretty simple, so it's not going to be hard for me to remember what corresponds to what. I decided to decorate this page using, again, stamps. These are also by Create a Smile stamps, and I am going to use the technique that is called masking. To create the actual masks, I stamped the images on some sticky notes. These are post-it notes which are sticky on the back. And then I am going to start creating some floral clusters. And where I have images that overlap, I can use those masks to protect whatever I have stamped on the page already so that I can create a dimensional effect that looks nice and neat. What you stamp at the beginning is going to be the image that's in the forefront and what you stamp in the second and third instance are going to be your second and third layer. So the last images you stamp are the ones on the very back. I then wanted my key to look like a little frame that was hanging on this wall, which was full with leaves. I went in and filled in the areas that had not stamped perfectly on the leaves, and here I'm finally using something that's thick enough to keep my pages nice and straight, so that when I do my stamping it's easier to get a clear impression. I decided to make the outline of this frame a little bit thicker and then I'm also creating a little bit of a drop shadow. To create the drop shadow, I'm basically just drawing thicker lines to the left and the bottom of my frame and I think this is a nice way to make your boxes stand out in your bullet journal. I also drew in a little dot that represents a nail and then two wires, basically or threads, that are what keeps my frame hanging on the wall. I colored in the panel with another of my brush markers. I was checking if I got any ghosting and I have to say it's not too bad at all. For my key elements, I went with sort of the traditional bullet journaling convention. So I have a little dot for a task, a cross for a task that's completed, a little sort of arrow for something that's migrated, and an arrow backwards for something that's rescheduled. I added a little 
empty circle for events and a star for important stuff. But um, I didn't like the spacing because I uh, it wasn't centered. So I decided to do what I did for my November month on the yearly spread and basically um, just trim down one of those perforated dotted pages to the size of my box. And this time I first penciled in my key elements and then I went ahead and wrote them down with my Faber-Castell pen. In this version I removed the event and I added a key for a cancelled task, but I will come back in later on and add another element to this page where I will have a key for an event, one for deadlines and one for appointments, because while I was using my journal during the month of July I realized that I needed that. Here I wanted to decorate a page because one of my goals is to start doodling again and start drawing to improve my skills. So I looked for a quote that sort of spoke to me and I started creating a page that was inspired by the quote. Um, the quote itself reads, creativity takes courage. And I didn't have the courage though to leave this page as is because I really didn't like the way it turned out. So I'm going to end up covering it with another page that I created with some stamps. I have to say that I regret it a little bit, um, but there's nothing I can do at this point. I mean, I don't want to add another page on top of the page that I used to fix this one. So it's going to stay as is. And it's going to be a reminder that, you know, it does take courage and it's okay when things are not perfect. Um, that's what I like about bullet journaling in a way. I still thought it could be interesting for you to see the process of creating this decorated page. Maybe it's going to inspire you somehow to create something that looks a little bit nicer than this. So I hope you enjoy watching me doodle in this quote page. And basically the problem here, I think, is that I didn't know when to stop. So I felt that I needed to make the words stand out a little bit more. And then the page felt empty. So I started adding these little circles. I don't know, like... Now that I'm looking at it for my first doodle after like four years, maybe it's not too bad, but at the time I wasn't feeling it. So this is what I replaced it with. And for that I used some stamps by Creator Smile Stamps 2 that have this beautiful mandala pattern. And on the left page you can also see my updated key with keys for appointments, events and deadlines. For the quote page I used again those alphabet stamps by Creator Smile Stamps to write in the or to stamp the word creativity and the rest was written with my own handwriting. I added some black squiggly lines that maybe didn't need to be there and a black border to make the page stand out. And to round the corners of the page that I glued on top, I used a corner chomper. And the page is again one of those perforated pages that I showed before. On the next spread, I have my goals for the rest of 2019s and underneath, I'm also going to track the milestones. I think it would be nice to go back and look at the things that I have achieved. To the right, I have my stats for my social media. So I have Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, uh, my blog and Twitter. And by the way, if you're interested, they will be all linked in the description box down below. Underneath, I have a post tracker. So I'm going to track how many posts I have each month for each one of my social media platforms so I can see if they correlate with the followers I gain. And here we are already at my expense page and my wish list. Yes, I left an entire page for my wish list because I know myself this is not even going to be enough, but anyway, <laughs> that's just me. As you can see, the setup is really minimal with very few decorations and it was very quick to put together. As I mentioned already, I am a beginner at this. I thought it would be nice to share this with you. Uh, maybe if you are beginning to, this can be something that's not too overwhelming uh, that you can be inspired by. 
The next page is going to be video ideas and I am already kind of halfway through this page so maybe I should have left too. But well, you know, we live and learn. Plus I could always either insert pages or add more spreads at the end of the journal so it's not a big deal. For the next page I drew in a cheat sheet. So this is an idea that I saw on Amanda Rage Lee's channel. And obviously before starting my bullet journal I watched a ton of YouTube videos and I will link the channels that inspired me in the description box down below so you can check those out too. They are really great and some of them are such amazing artists and yeah, an inspiration for me to get into drawing again. But basically the idea behind the cheat sheet is that you mark how many squares you have in your page in either directions and also how many you need if you want to split your pages in halves, in quarters or in thirds. I'm using a color code to make things easier to look at and the markers that I'm used or the pens I should say are my Stabilo felt tip pens. I'm using a kneaded eraser to erase my pencil lines and I prefer that over a traditional one because this doesn't shed so you don't have to chase all those little crumbs or you know, I don't know what the exact name is but you know what I mean. I added the title to my cheat sheet page and I'm also adding some shadows and horizontal lines with my duo tip markers. And each time I add a new page, I'm going to add it to my index as well. The pages are numbered, so I know where I can find everything this way. So this is my bullet journal setup. Pretty simple and pretty minimal as you can see. My goal, as I said, is to start doodling again and uh, to start learning how to hand letter. Because I know that pretty much all the viewers on my channel at this point watch this channel because of my card making and stamping related content. Let me know if you'd like to see more stamping on my spreads or more doodling. And also if you're interested in this video at all. Honestly, I'm really excited about this and I really would like to share this part of my creative journey with you. So we'll try this out and see how it goes. My spread for July is already set up. I needed that for practical purposes. So there will be an August plan with me video soon, like in the next week or in the next 10 days, let's say. And there you will have a flip through of my July setup too. As always, if you enjoyed this video, you can let me know with a comment or a thumbs up or both. This helps my channel a lot. You can subscribe if you haven't already for more inspiration. And as always, I thank you all so much for stopping by and I hope you have a great day.